I was born in Charleston in 1923, and but I don't count myself a Charlestonian. I'm a Sea Islander. I went, I was raised on John's Island on a dairy farm. Went barefoot until I was 15. Then I went to college at the University of North Carolina. And I, while I was there, <coughs> Pearl Harbor happened when I was a sophomore. And that meant that at age 19, I was, a can I was ready for, uh, eligible for the draft. So I went to the University of Notre Dame to midshipman school and became what the enlisted men loved to call us 90 day wonders. What that meant was that after 90 days, I was an officer and a gentleman and supposed to have been a deck officer and knew everything, but we didn't. We, we were thrown into the Navy and we learned after we got our your commission. My unit was called a JASCO, which was a, a Joint Assault Signal Company, and I was the Naval Gunfire Liaison Officer with that. What that meant was that I was assigned to, with an with a, a, a artillery officer, and I was assigned to a gunfire, Naval Gunfire Team, and our job was to support the Marines or uh, Army or unit doing an operation by providing them with naval gunfire from ships offshore. Uh, within a half hour, the Japanese let us land the first waves, and then they opened up with everything they had. And that meant that they were killing people like crazy on the beach. When I landed about three hours after the first, I was lucky. I guess there was a lull. I jumped out of my LVT and ran across the beach and over to the other side of the island to join my unit. It, it, it was just chaos. I spent all the whole 36 days of the operation on the island providing naval gunfire supposedly to the Marines, but unfortunately the Japanese were dug in and the Marines had to dig them out. So. In some cases, we 15 feet to that bulkhead over there, the Japanese were there and the Marines were here, and that, that's way too close. <laughs> so most of my job was providing them with uh, star shell illumination at night. I would get the destroyer to the coordinates of where I wanted them to fire, and they would fire a star shell. It would burst open, a little parachute would come out, and his flare would light up, and it would illuminate the battlefield and that kept the Japanese from Benzai attacks or sneaking up on our guys. It was a morale boost there, it wasn't, it didn't, didn't do much else beside that. At the end of the war, we had far, far more uh, uh, troops in the Pacific than we needed. The Japanese, once they surrendered, they followed the terms of surrender right down the line. There were 21,000 Japanese on the island, 20,000 of them were killed. Uh, maybe a thousand were captured uh, or surrendered. Uh, we had close to 75,000 men on the island. Again, the guys with the rifles, 30,000 of them did most of the work because uh, they had to go fight the Japanese. The West was support like me.